Mr. President, at the end of last week, President Biden published an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal touting his economic record. It was not exactly new material. The President's well known for attempting to put a rosy spin on his economic record. But I still have to marvel every time the President claims that he's building the economy from the bottom up and the middle out and working to give families, quote, more breathing room. Because if there's one thing that can be said about the Biden presidency, it's that American families have lost a lot of their breathing room. The inflation crisis the president helped create is costing American families $880 this month. Let me just repeat that, Mr. President. The inflation crisis that the president helped create is costing American families $880 this month. $880 for just one month. Meanwhile, real wages have declined for 26 consecutive months under President Biden. 26 consecutive months. Two plus years. So it's no surprise that in a poll last month, 49% of Americans reported that their personal financial situation is getting worse. Or that in another poll, 61% said recent price increases had caused financial hardship for them or their household. And Mr. President, let's be very clear. This is not a random situation that just happened to occur on the President's watch. The President bears direct responsibility for this inflation crisis, which was set off in large part thanks to the bloated, big government, American rescue plan spending spree that Democrats and the President forced through shortly after the President came to office. And you don't have to take my word on that. Here's what one former Obama advisor had to say on the subject, and I'm quoting here. The $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan passed in the early days of the Biden administration will go down in history as an extraordinary policy mistake, end quote. Will go down in history as an extraordinary policy mistake. That from an Obama advisor. Or as another former Obama advisor noted, and I quote again, the original sin was an oversized American rescue plan, end quote. And contrary to what he suggests in his op-ed, the president has done exactly nothing to bring down inflation since. Indeed, he's continued to pursue the same kind of big government, big spending policies that helped land us in this mess in the first place. And so it's frankly staggering to me that the president continues to have the audacity to say things like hardworking families are reaping the rewards of his policies. Hardworking families are certainly reaping something from the president's policies, but it isn't rewards. But as I said earlier, the president is well known for trying to put a rosy spin on his economic record. And he trots out some of his favorite misleading statistics in this op-ed. Since he took office, he claims, the economy has created more than 13 million jobs. Well, that sounds pretty good, right? Until you realize that the vast majority of those jobs weren't newly created, but are rather just jobs that were naturally added back after the pandemic. Currently, we are just 3.7 million jobs above where we were pre-pandemic, hardly the historic job boom that the president portrays. The president also mentions that gasoline prices are down from their peak in June of 2022. But he neglects to mention that gas prices are currently up 50 percent from where they were when he took office. Then, of course, the president brings up one of his favorite claims, that he reduced the deficit by $1.7 trillion over the first two years of his administration. Well, here's how the Washington Post fact checker column has described that claim. Highly misleading. Highly misleading. The president arrives at this highly misleading statistic by comparing his budget deficit in fiscal year 2022 to the fiscal year 2020 budget deficit, which was unusually large, to put it mildly, as a result of the COVID pandemic. A much more appropriate comparison would be to compare President Biden's actual 2022 budget deficit 
to what the Congressional Budget Office was projecting that deficit would be before the President's American Rescue Plan spending spree was enacted. That tells a far different story. The reality, as the Post points out, and I quote, is that the data shows the deficit picture has worsened under Biden, end quote. The Washington Post fact checker column recently awarded President Biden a, quote, bottomless Pinocchio for his deficit reduction claims, a rating the column gives for, and again, I quote, false or misleading statements repeated so often that they become a form of propaganda, end quote. Mr. President, I can't close without mentioning the President's staggering claim that he, again, quote, fought so hard to bring Democrats and Republicans in Congress together to compromise on the budget and prevent a catastrophic default, end quote. As I've already highlighted, the President is fairly well known for revisionist history. But this statement, this statement might take the cake. Can the President possibly think that people have already forgotten that he spent months refusing to negotiate on a debt ceiling agreement and only came to the table at the last minute. Credit to the President for eventually recognizing that divided government requires compromise. But to suggest that he set out from the outset to forge a compromise between Democrats and Republicans is to skate the line between revisionist history and outright falsehood. Mr. President, after two years of painful price hikes at the gas pump and the grocery store, I think few Americans would recognize the positive picture that the President paints in his op-ed. And unfortunately, it's clear from the President's column that he plans to continue to pursue policies that will further undermine the economic well-being of the American people. So much, so much for giving American families more breathing room. Mr. President, I yield the floor.